The Michigan Wolverines are riding high after a big win last weekend over the USC Trojans. But will those pesky Minnesota Golden Gophers catch the maize and blue in a possible letdown spot? From L.A. to Piscataway, all Big Ten, all year long, this is Big Ten Ten. It is the battle for the little brown jug. This trophy has been traveling more than any other trophy. It's got more history than any other traveling trophy in the history of sports, in the history of college football. So there's a lot of history behind this matchup between Michigan and Minnesota. The rivalry itself has been fairly one-sided. Michigan has won a lot. Minnesota certainly hasn't won as many, but the Golden Gophers maybe are looking to play spoiler after Michigan's big-time win, and that's kind of where I want to start with this particular matchup. I think to really find out a lot about both teams, Michigan and Minnesota, you got to go back into the time machine to last weekend. Michigan was a very motivated football team. This was an amped up football team for that matchup against a really good USC program in USC's first Big Ten conference game. Michigan wanted to get back to their identity and doing it really good. They wanted to get back to that smash identity that Sharon Moore talks about. You look at the first three games of the season, the run game got better against Arkansas State. Right, But the first three games of the season, I don't think we're up to the standard of Michigan football and how they want to play on the offensive line, how they want to create some of those explosive run plays, Right, how they want to wreak havoc on the defensive line, but check, check, and check in that game against USC. No doubt about it, it was the best game that Michigan has played all season long. You look back last weekend to the Minnesota Golden Gophers, certainly a respectable first half they were leading by seven at halftime in that Floyd of Rosedale game against the Iowa Hawkeyes but man did they get worn down and Caleb Johnson Caleb Johnson right as he's done so far this season and the Iowa Hawkeyes ran away with that I think these two games and how they kind of ended up last week might tell us about this game a lot about this game and a lot about maybe where these football teams are going throughout the rest of the season all right so we talked about Michigan They were motivated. They were amped up. They found a way to win an emotional football game over the USC Trojans. Now you turn around and you play a 12 Eastern, 11 a.m. Central kickoff against a team that maybe you're not the most amped up to play, a team that's certainly in the bottom half of the Big Ten Conference. I think there's a possibility that Michigan could come out a little bit flat. I think there's a possibility that maybe Michigan could come out a little bit sluggish. And that's exactly what Minnesota needs to stay in this game as long as they possibly can stay in this game. They need to get off to a good start. Minnesota needs to find a way to do what the Trojans were not able to do and limit those 40, those 50, those 60 plus yard runs from Donovan Edwards and Kaleo Mullins. Now, I think that's going to be a challenge for this Minnesota defense. Certainly, we'll talk about that uh, here in just a little bit. But I think early, Minnesota needs to find a way to get Michigan into third and six or more. Make Alex Orgy beat you early in this game because I think we know, I think it's no surprise, right, what Michigan wants to do and that they're not very confident in this throw game right now. So if you can force them to do that early and establish that that's what you want to do and that's how this game is going to go, maybe Minnesota can maybe change how this how the flow of the game is certainly going to go. So I'm very interested to see uh, the mentality of this team, how fired up this team is going to be, right? Sharon Moore, you know, a lot goes into being a head coach of a college football program. I'm very curious to see where he has this team mentally coming into a game in an early kickoff against maybe a lower tier team. Just keep an eye on that. And when you look at this Vegas line, they've got Michigan just as a nine point favorite. So Michigan may be anticipating a little bit of a slow, or Vegas, I should say, may be anticipating a little bit of a slow Michigan start to really start off this thing as well. All right, let's get into Michigan. And last week, they threw the ball 12 times. 
Michigan's 32 yards passing were the least in a game since 1987, and we might be setting some more records this week. I think there is a potential to do that. Now, I know Colston Loveland's health is still up in the air. There was a possibility. Sharon Moore said that he could have gone last week, but the doctors kind of held him out um, for that game. So we'll see if he is going to be involved in this game. If he is, you got to think that they are going to try to capitalize on that and get him going a little bit down the seam and down the field a, a little bit more. But you look at what Minnesota has done against the run, against their power four opponents to this season, and you can see why. Michigan is just going to keep on pounding the football more, and they're going to keep on passing the football less. Okay, Minnesota. Okay, don't let those shutouts against Rhode Island and Nevada skew some things. Don't look at the season averages and let that skew maybe your thoughts of what this Golden Gopher defense is or isn't. In the two games in which they've faced power four opponents, they faced two pretty good running backs. Michigan's got, they got two pretty good running backs as well, but they faced Amari and Hampton in week one against North Carolina. Last week, they faced uh, the leader in rushing in FBS, that being Iowa's Caleb Johnson. In those two games, they com- they allowed a combined 335 yards on the ground. This is a run defense that can get worn down. This is a run defense that can be capitalized upon, right? So because of that, if I said to you, nine and a half is the over-under on pass attempts, are you taking the over or are you taking the under? I think there's a world that exists that Michigan, even if this is a a one-touchdown game, even if it's 10 to three going into the third quarter, that they still just run and run and run. I said it last week, reacting to the Michigan-USC game, patience is a virtue. And I think Michigan is going to continue to have patience in this run game as long as they have the advantage. That's exactly where Michigan wants to live. And I think that's exactly where they're going to live against Minnesota. So maybe this game might be because of, you know, coming out with an early kickoff, maybe not as motivated, uh, not, not of course being a big time opponent. Maybe this game could be a little bit closer early on, but I think as this game can continue to wear on, they can continue to wear down the Minnesota run defense. And we've seen what has happened to the Minnesota Golden Gophers, right? When they are on the field for a long period of time and their offense is not moving the ball, it's bad news for the Maroon and Gold. So we'll see if Michigan can continue that trend as well. Let's talk about the Minnesota Golden Gophers and what they need to be able to do offensively, I think, to help out their case. I just talked about it. Right, They need to be able to sustain drives. They need to be able to move the football down the field because the, the, you, you get in a situation where you're going three and out and you're not moving the football at all and you're not giving your defense a break, they're going to be worn down. And I think they're going to get worn down earlier than you want them to. Maybe later on in the first half, they're going to start to be gassed a little bit. You're going to see some hands on hips, right? When you talk about what Michigan wants to do in establishing that push of the line of scrimmage and running downhill. So if you're Minnesota, you need to find a way to put together first down after first down and actually get some numbers in that time of possession column. Now, here's the thing about Minnesota this season, right? When you think of P.J. Flack, you think of maybe Muhammad Ibrahim and what he was able to do as Minnesota's leading rusher uh, and, and setting that mark. And then you look at Darius Taylor when he was healthy last year. Man, he was running for big-time yardage on the ground. But this is a Minnesota offense even when Darius Taylor has been healthy, that is investing a lot more into their throw game. And I think they need to throw to set up the run in this game. Because if you come out and all of a sudden you're saying, yeah, we want to pound Darius Taylor. Like look at what USC did early in that matchup against Michigan where they ran up the middle against Mason Graham and Kenneth Grant, right? It got them behind and they only scored three points in that first half. So I think Minnesota, right? even though it's kind of weird that they're avoiding getting the ball into the hands of their best player, right? I still believe that this is a Minnesota offense that probably needs to start this game throwing to try to open this thing up. Look, you're not going to stretch the field a ton because I don't think that the Minnesota offensive line can hold up against this Michigan pass rush. So you need to have shorter, quicker 
passing concepts, have Daniel Jackson and Elijah Spencer try to find the holes in the zone. Of course, when they're playing zone coverage, when they're playing man coverage, uh, you know, you just need to be able to separate for that little bit to get that five to seven yards turn up field and just keep on moving the football that way. Right. And then like you saw USC do that once they got protection in the second half, right? Then the run lanes open up for Woody Marks. If they can find a way for the run lanes to open up like that for Darius Taylor, that could maybe be a recipe for Minnesota to at the very least move the football to give their defense a break so they don't get so worn down. Man, it's just, it favors Michigan so much based on what I've seen from Minnesota. They've, like I said, that offensively, they've gotten away from what has been successful in the past. Maybe they don't have as much confidence in the interior offensive line that they have had in years past. And it really is a shame because I think coming into the season, I thought Darius Taylor, I still think he's one of the more talented running backs in the Big Ten, but I thought he could be that 1,000-yard, 1,500 type of back back there. I'm not sure if I think that anymore. I'm not, based on what I've seen from Minnesota and Greg Harbo calling things the, their offensive coordinator, like they're investing a lot more into back, Max Brosmer this year and their throw game than they are in Darius Taylor and pounding that run game as well. So I just think there's so many things. Could Michigan come out a little bit flat? Yeah, they could, but I don't think that's going to last for 60 minutes. And playing a 60-minute game has been a struggle against the two power four opponents for the Minnesota Golden Gophers this season. It is prediction time. I've got Michigan rolling in this one, 31 to six, the final score. Now we could see something early on. We could see a 10 to three matchup, maybe a little bit later on uh, in the first half. And maybe they're coming out a little bit slow, but I think Minnesota is going to have a tremendously tough time moving the football against this great Michigan defense. I think the receivers are going to have a tough time getting open like that first game against North Carolina, even. There were times in that football game where they had trouble separating from the Tar Heel defensive backs. Just imagine what when you have a Will Johnson, when you have some of these defenders that they have back there, it's going to be even more difficult to be able to separate uh, from them in this game. You know, considering Minnesota is leaning more into the throw game, I think there's a possibility of a scoop and score. I think there's a possibility of a pick six, some type of defensive touchdown in this game for the Michigan defense. So I've got them there 31-6 over the Minnesota Golden Gophers. I want to hear what you guys think. How do you view this one going down? Do you think Minnesota can play this one a little bit closer? Or do you, like me, do you think the Michigan Wolverines are going to roll? Leave all your thoughts and score predictions, Michigan, Minnesota, in the comments below. I'm Big Ten Ted. We will see you in the next one. Thanks for watching Big Ten Ted, where it's all Big Ten all year long. Make sure to like the video to spread the word of Big Ten Ted to the masses and subscribe to the channel for updates on Big Ten content that drops every day.